a Stuart 5A steam engine bought online from the auction site that we all know and love. This engine was bought by a friend of mine from the USA, and my friend asked if it was okay to have this engine delivered to me so I could give it the once over. He also asked me to fit the reversing gear that was with the engine, but not completed. So yesterday, the 18th of July 2018, a man arrived with the engine. Also with the engine were a collection of random parts. There were some pieces of brass, some pieces of tubing, and lots of these small blue boxes. Two of the boxes contained parts for the 5A, and the rest of the boxes are just going in the bin. What I was looking at was the contents of a deceased workshop. It literally cleared out the workshop. Some of the parts are useful. There was a boiler kit, but I don't think I'll be building that. So, did the engine work? No, it didn't. I asked the man if it had the engine running, and he said yes, he'd tried it on his compressor. Then I asked him what the air pressure was that he ran the engine on, and he said, wait for it, 110 pounds per square inch. I knew what the problem was. It's very common with steam engines. The valve was stuck on the valve spindle. So I removed the cylinder cover and slackened off the two nuts that support the valve, giving it a bit of float. Then I put the engine back together and connected my airline. I set the pressure to about 15 pounds per square inch and the engine did this. As you've just seen in this clip, the crankshaft is moving up and down. The engine actually looks quite well made, but there's clearly something wrong here. So I took the top cap off to have a look at it. And as you can see, it's been repaired. And the repair is okay, it's been repaired very well. The purpose of these top caps is to hold the split bearings in place and press them together to support the crankshaft. But this is a rattle fit on top of the bearing. As a temporary measure to get the engine running properly, I just fitted a gasket like this. And the shape of the hole in the middle of the gasket is intentional. And it's to make sure that the oil hole is fully clear and in line with the bearing. The next job was to bolt the top cap back in position and try the engine one more time. And now the crankshaft is adequately supported by the bearing and doesn't go up and down anymore. This is a shot of the small end of the connecting rod and as you can see it's very sloppy in the crosshead. But the engine runs. The flywheel was at the extreme end of the crankshaft and this is never a good idea because the leverage on the crankshaft means that the crankshaft could be easily bent. So I'm going to move the flywheel nearer to the bearing and I need to take this key out first. I'm very gently using a big old screwdriver removing the key from the crankshaft keyway. You will notice that I'm using a lot of light hammer blows and no heavy hammer blows and in no time at all the key comes out of the flywheel. I cleaned up the key, slid the flywheel into the correct position and refitted the key using my soft hammer. That's more like it. There's far less danger of the crankshaft getting bent with the flywheel in this position. When the man brought the engine into my workshop and I saw it for the first time, I knew it wasn't going to be good. I'm not clairvoyant, I have the odd vision or two, but it's just a rule that I apply from experience. If the engine is painted like this, in lots of different colours, with the telltale blobs of paint on the bolt heads, it's not going to run well. This is a shot of one of the cylinder drain cocks, and they're made to quite a good standard. The valve timing is not bad. It's a little bit on the late side, so I'm going to modify this. At the moment, I have about five pounds per square inch of compressed air going into the engine. So I can easily control the flywheel. It's not going to spin round and take my hand off or anything. And the reason for doing this is so that I can hear the admission of the steam, or in this case, compressed air, into the cylinder during the cycle. As you can see from this clip, when I let go of the flywheel and try to turn the engine, there's not enough air pressure to make it work. Only when I turn up the pressure does the engine rotate freely. 
but now the engine doesn't sound too good. It doesn't like that setting, obviously. So I'm going to retard the timing slightly. I'm moving the eccentric sheave in the opposite direction, and this will admit the air to the cylinder slightly later than previously. The creaking that you can hear periodically is not the engine, it's the chair that I'm sat on. What I'm doing in this clip is applying some steam oil, not my normal mixture which is thin. This is standard 1000 grade steam oil and it should make the engine run a lot quieter, although I don't recommend it for bearing lubrication. I think I'll turn up the pressure and see what it sounds like. And I'll take this opportunity to use a piece of scotch bright on the end of the crankshaft to clean it up. I notice that there is a bit of run out on the flywheel, but that is fairly common. My 5A has a bit of run out as well. This engine's really not done much running. It can't have done with the valve in the position that it was. So I'm just going to leave it running while I look in the boxes to find the reversing gear parts. And here are the parts, and the good news is they've been machined. So should you buy an engine off the internet? Well, yes, I suppose you should really, because my friend paid less than the price of the raw castings for this engine, and it includes the reversing gear. As I recently bought a set of reversing gear castings for my 5A, I can vouch for the fact that they are very expensive. And of course the reversing gear that I bought from Stuart Models was completely unmachined, not like this. If I'd have bought a Stuart 5A at the price that my friend paid for this, I would be very pleased indeed. So put the reversing gear in one of the blue boxes and wrote on it, 5A valve gear, just so I know where it is. And it gets better. The engine also came with these, an unmachined set of castings for a 5A water pump. I don't think this is part of the water pump. But this is though, this is the part that holds the gland packing in place. And finally, the eccentric strap and the eccentric sheave. I won't be machining and fitting these parts to the engine though, because my friend says he doesn't need it. I will however be fitting a mechanical lubricator to the engine, which will be driven from one of the existing eccentrics. In one of the other boxes, quite by chance, I found this. This is the die block and I'm temporarily going to just bolt it in place on one of the eccentrics so I know where it is. A couple of weeks ago a viewer commented and said, you've got very dirty hands, you should go and have a pedicure. I mentioned this in a previous video. So I went and had a pedicure and my feet really looked nice and I was so impressed with this I went back to the same place and said, look, the feet are great, can you do the hands now? And reluctantly the person at the pedicure place started to work on my hands. And the right hand was quite good. Look at this, it's really nice. But the left hand went a bit wrong. But I can still use it to tell the viewer what I thought of the comment. And just in case you're concerned about my hands, those were not my hands, they're the hands of my good friend Nigel. Nigel unfortunately lost some fingers in an accident with a circular saw when he was about 18. I suggested that he writes a book called The Amateur's Guide to Successful Circular Saw Operation. Oh, and by the way, just in case you get the wrong idea, my friend Nigel does not normally paint his nails red. He just did it for the video. I can't really say any more. Here's a Stuart 5A that my friend bought from the auction site that we all know and love called eBay, and it's running very well, so it was a bargain. And it's complete with a set of castings for the water pump and a set of machine parts for the reversing gear. What more could a man want? Well, apart from a nymphomaniac who owns a pub next to a golf course, and on that very old joke, I will take my leave of you. So thanks very much for watching, and I hope you found it useful.